Hello, my awesome eighth graders. Today we're going to be going over the day one of irrational numbers, 1.4. As you notice up on the board, we're going to be spending three days on lesson 1.4. And um, your notes, this page is page 15 in your notes. We're going to be doing page 16 together today for day one classifying whether those examples are rational or irrational. Day two, we're going to be going over uh, rounding irrational numbers to the nearest tenth. And then on day three, we will learn how to um, order these. Some are rational, but some are irrational numbers in uh, order from least to greatest, and then also to know how to put them on a number line. But today, for day one, let's go to your page 16 in your notes, as this will be all we'll be going over for our day one. And it says, classify each number as rational and irrational. We've gone over rational, over and over rational, and what it means. And uh, we gave examples of rational numbers being any number that can be turned into a fraction. So, basically, we ask ourselves, okay, if all rational numbers can be turned into a fraction, what is an irrational number then? Well, pretty much the opposite. It's a number that can't be represented as a fraction, turned into a fraction, when given in its full entirety. And the number one example is up on the board, pi. All right? Anytime if the sign pi were to show up, that would be written as irrational. And the definition, it can't, the decimal goes on and on. It does not repeat. It does not terminate. All right? Another example of irrational numbers are, well, let's just go right down here to letter A. If you look at number a, or letter A, the square root of 24, is that rational or irrational? Well, we know perfect squares are rational. Is the square root of 24 a perfect square? I agree. No, it is not. So, therefore, it is irrational. All right. Make my pen smaller here. It is irrational. And then on the line, you have to explain why you chose that answer. And... This is irrational because it is a non-perfect square. That's what you would need to write to be a 3 and not a 2. All right? Letter B. What kind of decimal is that? It is a repeating decimal. And we know that all repeating decimals are rational. So your explanation for why is it rational? Because it is a repeating decimal. All right, letter C, the whole number 11, rational. Why? Because all whole numbers can be made into a fraction. There we go. All right. So all whole numbers, whether positive or negative, so basically all integers, are rational because they can be made into a fraction by putting them over a 1. Letter D, what kind of decimal is that? We talked about it. Even though it doesn't have the bar notation, it has the dot, 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 which indicates it is a repeating decimal, and repeating decimals are rational. And so just like we wrote up here then, what's the reason? Because it is a repeating decimal. Ooh, this pen is kind of tricky. I'm getting used to it, though. <clears throat> All right. Letter E, the square root of 149. Is that a perfect square? No, no, it is not. So 
irrational it is. And our explanation for it is non-perfect square. How about 3.14? Now, we know that 3.14 is an approximation of pi, right? But since this isn't written as pi, this is written in a representation using a terminating decimal. So this representation, 3.14, given to us is actually considered rational. Why? Because it is a terminating decimal. Now you're going to want to leave this page of notes open while you do your homework today so you have it as a reference. So make sure you get all these filled in and written in so you have them to look at. I kind of gave away letter G now because now we have the symbol pi. So does that represent rational or irrational? Now we know that is irrational and you can write can't be made into a fraction. All right. Now, slide that up. We have three left. Now you're saying Pi can't be made into a fraction, but yes, it can. We use 22 over 7. That's an approximation. Remember the squiggly line? So if you took 22 divided it by 7, it would be close to pi, but if the calculator could keep going on and on, it wouldn't be exactly what pi is. But mathematicians have come up with this as the closest approximation to pi, so we can use it when we find area of circles and circumference and and that sort of thing when we get into to volume. But when it's written as a fraction here, that's an approximation, but it is a fraction, and we know all fractions are rational. And why is this rational? That's easy, because it's a fraction. How about letter I? Square root of 81. Is that a perfect square? Yes, because that equals positive negative 9. That is a perfect square, therefore it's rational. Explanation. It is a perfect square. That's what you need to write there. And the last one. Now, this is an expression we need to simplify. Is just looking at it at this top part, you know, it looks like it's a fraction, but if you simplify, it'd be a fraction if this was a perfect square. Is 7 a perfect square? No, no, it is not. So we'd have uh, a decimal of some sort over 3, and that is not a perfect square. So therefore, this example is irrational. And you would write non-perfect square. Okay? Now, you have two pages to work on, I believe is what it is, on your homework today. You need to do day one, lesson 1.4. And then there are some review questions also that go back to what we did in our notes a few days ago when you were comparing greater than or less than. So look back in your notes when you get to your review questions. Those notes there. All right. No calculators. Sorry, but no calculators allowed in this lesson. When you're finished, Dreambox, you need to have four lessons done for this week since we didn't have school Monday. Um, four lessons due this week in Dreambox. Thank you. Have a great day. Talk to you later.